Hey everybody, Harrison one back at it once again with a brand new video for you. Now, I'm just going to get this out of the way now. This is not a live commentary. Before you start booing and turning this video off, hear me out on this one. There's a reason why this one isn't live. A couple of reasons why. First of all, I did the live commentary for this video and I really wasn't happy with some of the things I said in that video. So I didn't want to make the quality of my video worse by broadcasting that live commentary. Trust me, a lot of nasty things were said and you'll see why during the race but um another thing I wanted me to point out is that this isn't live because I also want to take the time in this video I thought this would be the perfect video and perfect video length to talk about Formula 1 2011 and the game itself and what I think of it because I know a lot of people have asked me what do you think of the game should I buy it should I wait for F1 2012 I thought okay I'm going to use one race out of this season not to go live so I can actually talk about this game itself so I thought this was the ideal kind of video and video length to be able to do that and um, in case you're wondering why I'm racing in cockpit view for this episode the Bobby um, the Bobby Joe guy thing on YouTube asked me to do it this way shout out to Bobby your, your support is amazing thank you and this is for you and I'm sorry that I, I had an abysmal race on this one it really didn't go according to plan for me on this one you'll see as the video takes place but hopefully you'll ignore that and listen to my awesome commentary instead Wow, that sounded really, really selfish. Anyway, whatever. Next, okay. So, people have been asking me about Formula 1 2011 and what I actually think of the game. I haven't actually, I never actually reviewed it myself, but people actually did ask me about this. It's been a, a very much a requested question about what I think of the game and, and um, should you buy it. Here's what I think of Formula 1 2011 and whether you should buy it or not. First of all, graphically, the game is superb. It really is. Code Monster's done a great job on this one. The cars look authentic. The models look great. I love the little details that are in the game, like marbles on the track once you um, drive for a certain amount of laps. And the, the tire, you can actually see the tires degradate in front of you if you're in that elevated camera slot. You can actually see the tires as they start to you know to, to wear off and things like that and especially when it gets wet as well when it get wet you see things like the spray kicking up and it makes it hard for you to see um, the standing water on the track and as, as the dry line starts to carve out over a period of time and the difference in the track as it, as it evolves and things like that it's it's amazing and it, it, it the little touches that the Kumas has did to the, to the games presentation and, and, and graphical design I think is superb so Codemasters is a full credit on that one the game looks glorious and the way it's done I think is, is, is superb uh, I absolutely applaud them for that presentation wise it's simple but effective um, it's not that much different from 20, 2011 when, in the terms of you're in a paddock and you know you go around the world to all these different locations as the season takes place and Things like that. I mean, I, I like that they've put little tidbits in, like um, Sky F1 commentator David Croft is now asking you the questions and things like that. And I, I don't like, the, I, I don't like that to cut the post race conferences. I actually did quite that. Was, that was actually quite a nice touch. If you got on the top three, you, you'd get a uh, post race press conference and things like that. I actually quite like that. So I don't know why they got rid of it. Um, I do actually miss that one quite a lot. Um, but overall presentation wise it, it's it's simple tweaks here and there it didn't really need changing much to begin with to be honest because it what, what what was already there in 2010 already served its purpose quite well so I don't really have any major complaints over that um, on to the gameplay which which I think is a is very much a mixed bag um, Gameplay itself in its purest form is great. I have no issues over that. Formula 1 2011 is still an extremely fun game to play. And, you know, if you're a novice all the way to... If, to, if you're an expert player, this game is fun. The, the car physics are, for the most part, very good. I can't complain over them. Um, the issues that I have with the game overall is that... The AI isn't that great. I know, I, I know I'm sounding like I'm beating a bush here with this one because I've said I think in two or three videos in the past I've said before about how the AI is, is, is bad at times. It is bad. I know Tom Jakes has mentioned this in the past one. His longer Formula 1 videos in the past he's, he's mentioned this. The AI is too passive I think in my opinion. It's You'll see you've seen multiple times during this series where 
I will make an amazing start from wherever I'm on the grid. I'll make an amazing start and pass half the field by the time we get past the first sector. It's crazy. And, and after that whole first sector carnage settles down and everyone's bunching up against each other, then I'll get blown out by the rest of the field because everyone else is two seconds a lap faster than me. I find it weird. Like I said, I'm really glad that they made the field more balanced this year compared to last year. In Formula 1 2010, a Lotus was just as fast as a Ferrari or a McLaren or a Red Bull, which made absolutely no sense whatsoever. So I'm glad that they've actually balanced the field so that the good cars are actually really good. So the top three teams, Ferrari, Red Bull, McLaren, are the best teams. They are visibly and clearly better than the rest of the field, while, for example... Cars like Force India and, and Sauber and Williams, etc., etc. The midfield cars feel like they're midfield cars compared to the rest. And then they're not really meant to be challenging for race wins unless they get a bit lucky. For example, you know, there's, there's retirements or incidences, etc., etc. So I'm glad they balanced the field. And in online races, you can turn this option off, so it's, it's actually optional for online play, which is actually a good move as well. But like I said, the AI. It's too passive, and if you're if you're a decent defensive driver, you know where to block. The AI will never pass you, no matter how slow your car is compared to the rest of the field, because the AI just isn't aggressive enough. Again, it, it makes it more disappointing when Codemaster said before the release they're going to make the AI of certain drivers more aggressive, depending on their driving style. According to guys like Lewis Hamilton and Kamui Kobayashi, guys who, are, who tend to be more aggressive passers. You don't see that in the game, you don't. And it's really easy to block somebody from passing you, it's ridiculously easy. Um, I wish the AI was more aggressive, but then again, to a degree, it's also hard to judge that as well, because at the same time, you also have to wonder, if they made it too aggressive, there'd be a whole heap of incidents and other cars could wreck you and ruin your race. So I guess it's a hard one to judge sometimes, but I do think the AI is just generally too passive. But the gameplay itself is great. I love the use of DRS. I love the use of Kurs. I think it's great. It makes great tactical racing. Passing cars is much more fun compared to 20, um, 2010 where there wasn't any of that in there. It was just pure performance. And I'm, I'm glad that that option is there. Um, I like that. Another gameplay thing I don't like is that beyond career mode, there's not much to Formula 1 2011 as an overall package. Yes, you've got a career mode, but it's a watered-down career mode. It's not seven seasons like in Formula 1 2010, where you could choose between a three, five, and seven season career. In 2011, it's five. End of. I mean, I don't even see why there's even a limit on the number of seasons you can have in the game. I don't like that it has to be five. I mean, you could do it, really, you should do as many as you want. You shouldn't have to start a new career after five seasons because what? Wide. I don't see the point in that. There's there's, it, there's no purpose that it really serves because many Formula 1 drivers are in Formula 1 for way more than five years. I mean, look at Michael Schumacher. He's been in the sport for, what, 20 now, give or take? I mean, there shouldn't be an option to have, to have it to be so limited. I think that's quite quite silly. But besides career mode, there isn't really much here. The, you, know, you, you can do custom race weekends and blah, blah, blah. And online is still very good. But nobody ever uses online modes besides Sprint, which I'll get to in a minute. But when I see other versions of Formula 1 2011, like, for example, the PSP version or the DS version or the uh, PS Vita version, which came out a couple of months ago, there's more options there. For example, there was challenges in the Wii version of F1 2010 last year. Uh, there was challenges like, okay, could you still win a race even though you've lost fifth gear? You know what I'm saying? Things like that. It's like, why are they in the, the mini versions of the game, but not in the big version on the on next generation consoles? I think they should bring that into the main game. It would easily add longevity to the game. And you know, it would increase the game's lasting appeal. It's like, for example, you, you, you can move between light gates and there's a checkpoint challenge and things like that. And there's all, 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 all these awesome challenges. I remember them on the PSP versions of Formula 1 games in the past and on the Vita version and on the DS version, which I've played. It's like, why not? What excuse is there not to have them on the main game? Yes, I know there's time attack modes where you can win gold medals, but what's the point of it? There's, there's no real point to these challenges besides, okay, okay, you've won a medal. What do you get with this medal? Nothing besides just having the medal there. It's like, what's the point? 
it, it's a it's a half-hearted attempt to try and increase the longevity of the game, and it doesn't really work. But um, online play is fun. I'm not a big fan of the ranking system. I don't know why the levels were capped to 50 and were like, like, were like patched and capped to 50. I don't see any reason why you should have to limit them at 50 in the first place, quite frankly. And um, it's 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 weird because it's like you can get to level 50 relatively quickly. It, it shouldn't take much. It could take you maybe 100 races. And, it, and that's not very long considering... 90% of people online on F1 2011 um, just go straight onto sprint mode. There's other modes there like pole position, which is just a qualifying shootout. Who's the fastest by one lap of a track? Or endurance, which is a 20% online race with full weather conditions and simulations. You know, and things like that, where there is other modes there, but nobody uses them. It's, it's all just a three lap online bare bones sprint, which I think is a bit silly. I mean, I don't, I don't, that's, that's not the developer's fault really that no one else uses these modes, but I just think that online there should be more to it. It's like when Co-Masters did things like Dirt and, and, and Grid Showdown where there was more options available and they were, and they were more obvious that there was other options out there. Um, people would actually use them. In this case, it's the fault set to sprint, which I think is silly. They should, they should just have more modes like in like in Showdown when there's actually more of a menu-driven system. Um, I don't like the I don't like the, the, the collision detection as well and things like that where you haven't caught a corner but the game says you have and you'll get penalties for it, which I think is silly. The penalty detection system needs to be improved because the way that some people get penalties in this game is just flat out unfair and uncharacteristic, and it ruins people's races and enjoyment of the game. They need to improve the penalty system for sure. However, I, I do like the fact they added a co-op season this year. You can go in there with your team, have a have you know have a teammate challenge and things like that, where you can get the upgrades first on cars and things like that. Co-op season is a nice addition, but um, overall, F1 2011 is a very fun game. It's got its frustrations and it's got its issues. Many of them still carrying over from Formula One 2010, which is sad because I was really hoping that some of the things would be fixed and improved but some of the some of the main errors from 2010 are still there i'm hoping 2012 addresses these i'm, I'm liking the, the addition of young drug mode I'm, I'm, I'm liking the the additions in the game for 2012 and what i'm hearing so far should you buy this game yes depending on the price i'm hearing now that places like shop to net are selling the game for i'm hearing 16 pounds £16 is, is a very nice price to pay for this game. Don't go out and pay £30 to £40 for it now. It's been out for over six months now. It's more like nine months now. We're only about four months away from 2012 coming out now, would you believe? But to me, it's a fun game. If you're a Formula 1 fan, definitely pick it up. You will enjoy it. Sparingly, though, mind you, because the more you play it, I think the more frustrated you'll get by playing it in the process. So that's my overall thoughts on Formula 1 2011. I'll leave you now to enjoy the rest of the video as it starts to rain and things will just generally get chaotic in Silverstone. I think I kind of fell apart towards the end as one. Well. I wasn't really concentrating, but whatever. I hope you enjoyed the review. Let me, if you've got the game, let me know what you think of it below. Let me know what you'd like to improve for next year's version. And I, and I, just, I hope you like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video. I've been Harrison with one. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Sign out.
still first in the drivers' championship.